Hello everybody and welcome back to uh, Not an Ordinary Guitar Lesson. Uh, there are two questions I get asked pretty frequently and the first one being who do I think I am as a European trying to teach Americans American music and I think there's so many things wrong on so many levels with these uh, questions and comments that I just uh, tend to ignore them. So let's skip right to the next one and that is uh, which echo do you use on stage? Which uh, echo pedal can you recommend? And because I use my custom built amps for over 20 years now with a built-in tape echo on the back, I, I don't really use echo pedals on stage or delay pedals. So I can't really recommend one to you. But uh, I still wanted to help you so I reached out to my favorite guitar players and some of them got back and they will present to you their favorite echo pedals. So let's start with Sean Mancha, who I met the first time in 1994 in Berlin when he played with High Noon at Huxley's. Uh, he probably doesn't remember me, but uh, then 10 years later we had the chance to, uh, to play together when we were on tour with Dick Wayne in Germany and then in Munich at the Rattlesnake Saloon, one of the coolest places on earth. Shout out to Bruno hanging there. And uh, we had the chance, uh, Sean and I, to hang out after the show and jam a little bit. I was able to steal a lick or two that I still use today. So here's Sean's uh, recommendation for you. Friends and neighbors, my name is Sean Mencher, and I'd like to say thank you so very much, Randy Richter, for inviting me to discuss what delay unit I use when I'm playing guitar. Um, I like the MXR carbon copy analog delay, and um, let's see here. That's that's the unit I use, and uh, takes a knocking and keeps on rocking, and. Uh, you know sounds real good to me and i just adjust it i use my ears to whatever for i use my hands but i, mean, I let my ears tell me what, what uh what sounds good i'll do it here's it i'll play a little bit of mystery train with it here we go MXR carbon copy analog delay 
And uh, thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed this. And thank you, Randy, for doing what you do. I appreciate all your great, great guitar lessons. This is my most recent recording. It's uh, 16 solo guitar uh, picking instrumental tracks. It's called Sean Mentor Plays Guitar. And it's uh, available from Swelltune Records, uh, www.swelltunerecords.com. Thank you, friends. Come say hi to me on Facebook, and uh, I appreciate you. Thank you so very much. And this is Sean Mentor saying happy trails. Next up is a guy I haven't really met yet. Uh, we talked on the phone last week, and I saw him the first time on Facebook. I saw one of his videos that he posted, and I was hugely impressed by his playing. He's just half my age, and I wish I was half as good when I was 23 years old. I'm talking about Stuart Turner. And he doesn't have a record out yet, but he offers Skype lessons. So if you're in need of a guitar teacher, an online guitar teacher, please uh, drop him a line. I have his email in the description below. And also the contact information of all the other musicians, of course. So here's the recommendation by Stuart Turner. Hello, my name is Stuart Turner. Um, I play for a band called the Rock and Turner Brothers and sometimes Dylan Kirk and the Killers. Um, so Randy's asked me to make a small contribution to his uh, video about pedals. So I'm going to quickly talk through what I use on stage. Um, for Rockabilly sound, I use a Boss DD3 digital delay pedal. And then sometimes for more jazzy stuff, I use a Tone City Spring Reverb pedal. So the delay pedal, um, it's a Boss DD3. I'll show what it sounds like, then I'll um, go through the settings quickly. So. <laughs> So on the delay I've got the volume or the level on about sort of a third, third of the way around and then um, the number of delays is on the minimum which is one and then these two controls sort of, they change the length of the delay and you've got to sort of have a play around till you get that sort of nice snappy slap back kind of sound. Say if I'm playing something a bit more sort of jazz influenced, I use the uh, Tone City Spring Reverb pedal. It's literally got one control knob, which is sort of nice and simple, um, which I'm a big fan of. Uh, I have that about sort of a quarter of the way around, about nine o'clock, and um, yeah, I'll show you what it sounds like. So. <laughs> of all my pedals. Um, I think the impor important thing to remember is that pedals don't make the sound uh, to sound a certain way really the most important thing is how you play but they sort of can enhance the sound and stuff so you shouldn't rely on them too much also they sort of go wrong all the time so you need to be used to playing without them at times so I hope that was some help to you. Good luck guys. If you have an echo pedal that you really love and you would like to recommend it, please write something in the comments so that the people who are still looking for a good recommendation can use this video here as a great resource. Yeah, it'll be highly appreciated. Next up is uh, Sean Young. And uh, Sean and I, we share the same birthday uh, together with Sam Cook, and we also share a passion for playing basketball. We gotta play a game of horse one day, maybe next year in Vegas. And he put together a great video that I love. I uh, love his records, of course, as well. You can get them at Swelltune. The uh, link is in the description below. And if you use the promo code GUITAR, you get 20% off.
but back to Sean's video. He's showing us some great, uh, interesting equipment. Uh, you'll really dig it. Yeah. Hey, everybody. We rolling? Yeah. Are we rolling? Yeah. Hey, Sean Young here. Uh, hey, we're talking uh, delays. And uh, our good buddy Randy reached out to a bunch of us and asked us to uh, do a, a video about uh, what we're using for, uh, for delay for all of you all out there. So uh, I'm going to start off with, uh, I'm down here in the studios, in Jet Tone Studios, uh, with a bunch of my rigs down here. And uh, we're going to, don't touch your face, Sean. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, uh, delays. And I'm going to start off with uh, one of my favorite uh, semi kind of delay effects that uh, is more of kind of a 60s thing because uh, it got popular, you know, in the early 60s when Leo Fender put out these units right here. The, this is a Fender reverb tank. Uh, of course, known, you know, it uh, very popular with surf music and surf bands. It's got that... That sound, you know that sound. But what uh, a lot of people don't realize is that a lot of, a lot of uh, country and, and uh, rockabilly guys were using this thing in the early 60s too. Uh, uh, one good example is uh, Luther Perkins was good friends with Leo Fender after uh, after Johnny Cash and Tennessee Two moved out to California, and Luther would hang out with uh, Leo, and Leo would throw him new equipment. And so Luther was one of the first guys to use one of these things on guitar, and uh, used it on uh, to, you know recordings like Bonanza. There's some good live footage on YouTube too of him using this with the hands. It's not quite delay, but it's it's a good drippy reverb, so it's got kind of that that almost it's got a slap back sound. One trick you can do with these, there's a there's a little uh, lever in the back of these that pushes up against the reverb pan. I don't know if you can see that back there, but this lever right here for transports keep the springs from uh, wearing out. And you can push that up and lock it in place and actually shorten down the decay. You get a pretty cool sound. Anyway, that's the, the reverb tank. We'll move on now to uh, another kind of cool old effect I got here. And this is, uh, this is from uh, Telray Electronics in California. Fender branded, and uh, they did these for Fender, for Gibson, for a bunch of different people. And this is an Echo Reverb unit. This is an oil can Echo. The reason I call it an oil can is there's a can of fluid right there, and you see those belts right there? They're spinning that inside that thing. The liquid inside is conductive, and so the electric signal from the guitar goes through that, has a playback head just like a tape player and it sends that signal up through that liquid and it comes around and reads it off the playback head as it goes around and as the liquid sloshes back and forth it reads it it doesn't read it it reads it it doesn't read it that's basically how it, how it works so you get a, a really crazy delay uh, effect out of this thing and it Sometimes it almost can sound like a tremolo. Yeah, really crazy. That's the long delay. Uh, some of these have have actually have a time like a, a rheostat that that uh, control the time. This one doesn't. It just has a long delay and a short delay and a mixed delay. There's the short delay. Pretty cool. Anyway, I should mention that's 61 Fender Concert uh, amp I'm playing through right there. There's my old 61 Bandmaster. And uh, back here is a, this is a 69 Standell solid state amp. This amp, the reason I'm mentioning this amp is this is a cool amp. This this amp was actually Butterball Harris's uh, last amp. He was a steel guitar player for Jimmy Heap and the Melody Masters back in Taylor, Texas. And I was lucky enough to pick this up from a 
from a buddy back there who had got, I believe he got it. I don't think he got actually got it from Butterball. He got it from uh, George Harrison, the, the drummer. Yeah, the drummer was actually named George Harrison and uh, from the Melody Masters. These things are, are, are good sound amps for, for solid state technology, early solid state technology from Standale. It's a cool, it sounds good with bass too. Anyway, just pointing that out because it's sitting over there. All right, now we're, uh, I'm gonna jump over here. I'll just grab this other guitar and have it plugged in. This is, uh, this is through the uh, little homemade 12 watt, something like that, I believe, head that uh, Alberto Taylor put together with a bunch of junk stuff in Austin. And this is my little, uh, this is my uh, handmade uh, 15 inch speaker cabinet. It's got a uh, JBL D130F speaker in it. So let's see, we got, and do we have sound? But, this is what I've used for the last whoops. I'm gonna do this right here right now, make a little bit of noise, but because the reason I don't use this delay pedal anymore is uh, the input jack is kind of getting messed up on it. This is a classic delay, believe it or not. I've been using this since the 80s. This is an Ibanez uh, ADL analog delay. These are great sound and delay units. This is the second generation of the, the famous uh, uh, 89 Ibanez, the pink one, the 89 that everybody still seek, seeks. Uh, and you can get, you can find these used for about $130, probably less right now, the way the economy's going. But uh, it's a great sound and delay unit. Like I said, the input jack is messed up on this thing. So let's see if we can get it to work here. There we go. Yeah, really good sound and analog delay. That's a great one. I'm going to split this up into two videos so it doesn't get too long, but uh, that's some of the stuff I got around the studio that we use, uh, you know, for recordings. A lot of times for recordings, though, too, I'll just play dry and uh, use the, the tape delay uh, that, you know, we layer over everything uh, when we're recording. So just use the, the Ampex 602 in the, in the control room and use that tape delay in there for recording. But all this stuff works. It all sounds good. Tools are... are you know what you make of them how you use them to get your sound but uh, there's a few that i've got last but not least we have my old friend axel prefke aka cherry casino the owner of lightning recorders and if you're looking for a cherry casino record or one by the roundup boys lily mo ike and the capers he's got them all just write him an email and the guys will highly appreciate it they need every cent there's no show to play until we don't know when hopefully soon and Axel is uh, loving a delay pedal that I used to have as well back in the days until I forget it after a show, yeah, uh, somewhere. And that's how it goes. So here's his recommendation for a delay pedal. <laughs> Hi folks, we're looking at a Dem Electro Real Echo Unit. Real, like tape reel. It's a digital echo and um, um, the color is not original. The whole thing is mint green, as you can see here. And uh, I just got rid of it when I bought it because I didn't like the color. Anyway, um, um, it's built a little like uh, an Echoplex device. You can change the length of the echo over here like moving as if you were moving a, a tape head to the left it's getting shorter to the right uh, it's getting very long as if there's a, a reel of tape going around and uh, not too many controls this one is the uh, the loudness of the echo you got the pure signal guitar signal here without echo let me switch it on you switch it on here no echo and as you turn this one to the right, clockwise, you get echo or echo.
echo only. Okay, so let me put it back. This one is a tone control for the echo. It's not affecting the original signal, it's only uh, for the repeats. Let me show you. I, I put it on repeat only. Actually, uh, if you turn it all the way to the left, I, I believe the signal is uh, a hair brighter than the original signal. So, yeah. Anyway, the, this is the repeats. Okay. Just one more repeat. Here you have uh, uh, another switch. It says tube in solid state, so that the two different sounds for the for the echo. This one sounds a little flat, more flat than this solid state. Let me give you an example. I don't know if it's audible. Sounds almost exactly like the original signal. If, if I switch it to tube, you can hear it. It's a little. It's not, it doesn't sound as fat, and it doesn't have the same frequencies as the original signal, it's a little more flat. Here you have a, a little gimmick, a tape, like tape flutter. Let me turn it up completely, and if you switch it on, it'll... Yeah. Tape flutter. I don't need it. I always put it like this. So, okay, that's about it. I want to say thank you to all the musicians who helped me to put this video together and I hope this video together with the comments will be a great resource for everybody who's still looking for a good rockabilly echo pedal.